This tutorial is to teach you how to use Charles's Law. We will use Charles's Law to determine either the temperature or the volume for a gas that is at constant um, pressure. This is the second tutorial in the basic gas law calculation um, set of videos on YouTube. So just as a quick reminder, remember that we're always working um, with three main units when we're doing these basic gas laws. That would be volume, which may be in milliliters, liters, etc. Pressure, which could be in atmospheres, kilopascals, millimeters mercury, tor, etc., and temperature. Now, we're used to measuring temperature in either degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit, typically, you know, in everyday life, but in chemistry, we like to use Kelvin, which um, the symbol for Kelvin is a capital K. And just a reminder from the Boyle's Law lesson, if you want to change your temperature from Celsius to Kelvin, you simply add 273. The reason that's important is that for the basic gas laws, you can put volume and pressure into the equation with a variety of different units, but temperature has to be in Kelvin. So if they give you a Celsius temperature, you're going to have to convert it to Kelvin before you plug in. Even if they ask you for the answer in Celsius, you have to plug it in as Kelvin. So that will be important in the Charles Law um, equations that we do today because we're actually going to be dealing with some temperatures. So that said, let's move on to Charles's Law. So let's see what Charles's Law says. Charles's Law states that the volume of a sample of a gas is directly proportional to the absolute temperature, that means the Kelvin temperature, when the pressure remains constant. So a couple things to point out here that are important. Number one for Charles's Law, Pressure remains constant. That means the pressure either will not change. They won't mention it at all. They may tell you what the pressure is, but they never talk about it changing. Or they may just up front say the pressure is constant. So you've got a lot of clues that you'll look at when you're wondering if that pressure is constant or not. And they're telling us that the volume is directly proportional to the absolute temperature. What that means is when... Volume goes up, temperature goes up, or you could say when temperature goes up, volume goes down, and when one goes down, the other one goes down. So that's what we mean by directly proportional. And um, some things to think about while we're doing these problems is you could think about a balloon. A lot of you have probably had a balloon before when you were a little kid, and at night, maybe when the house cools down, you notice the volume of the gas inside the balloon seems to go down. The balloon looks like maybe it's losing air. And um, as it heats up during the day, maybe the balloon's in a warmer spot in the house or the sun hits it, sometimes you notice all of a sudden the balloon kind of puffs back up. It looks like it's, um, it's filling up again. If it's a helium balloon, maybe it's rising a little higher. That's because when the gases in that balloon begin to warm up, when the temperature starts to go up, the gases spread out, they expand. You may have noticed um, in the wintertime, your tires on your car might look a little slack, like they're losing some air. But as you get out on the road and you're using those tires, there's some friction, the gas is heating up. When you get to your destination, it suddenly looks like maybe your tires have filled up. Maybe they're not looking as slack as they were before. That's because the gas inside the tires warmed up as you were driving and it expanded. So most of us know that when temperature increases, gases are going to expand. Hot air balloons are another great example of this. So um, for most matter, as gases expand, the temperature rises, or you could say as the temperature rises, the gas is going to expand. So the way that we would write this in our notes would be um, just a little note that when temperature goes up, likewise volume goes up. And when temperature goes down, volume goes down. So again, therefore, they are directly proportional. And this is true when pressure is constant. So the law for Charles's law looks like this. Volume 1 
over temperature one equals volume two over temperature two. Um, you may be noticing a similarity between this law and Boyle's law from the first video. The ones always seem to be on the left and the twos always seem to be on the right. I want you to keep that in mind and just think about it as we move on with these other videos because those similarities, and there's another one I'm gonna mention later, help you remember all the laws with just a few pieces of information that makes it really handy. And again, you may wanna make a um, note over here if you're taking notes at home, a great example could be a balloon. And we'll just draw one of those real quick. Let's say you have a balloon and it's at 75 Celsius. And let's say the temperature of that balloon drops to maybe 32 degrees Celsius. We would expect the volume of the balloon to be a lot smaller. So temperature up, volume up, temperature down, volume down. Let's go ahead and look at our first example. And we're gonna work through this um, in a very similar way that we did the Boyle's Law example. And what I mean by that is we're gonna label everything we've got, then we're gonna set our equation up so our unknown is on the left, what we're plugging into is on the right, and everything just works out perfectly. So a container of oxygen has a volume of 349 milliliters at a temperature of 50 degrees Celsius. So, at this temperature, I have this volume. These go together. So I'm going to make this my volume one, and that 50 degrees Celsius is going to be my temperature one. However, I cannot plug a Celsius temperature into my equation. So I am going to have to change that to Kelvin before I plug in, and we'll do that in just a second. What volume will the gas occupy at 20 degrees Celsius? That's the second temperature that they give me, also in Celsius, so I'm gonna convert it to Kelvin. And they're asking what volume, so I am solving for volume two. Now, before I do anything, I'm gonna go ahead and change uh, my T1 and my T2 to degrees Kelvin. So T1 equals 50 degrees Celsius plus 273. And 50 plus 273 is 323 Kelvin. And I'm going to convert this one to Kelvin too. And again, this is so I can plug it into the formula. My T2 was 20 degrees Celsius. I'm going to add that to 273. And that's going to give me 293 Kelvin. So now I've got my T1 and my T2 in the correct units. Remember, temperature always has to be in Kelvin before you plug it into the formula. So now I am ready to solve. So I'm going to rearrange my formula. And my formula for Charles's law is V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. In this case, I am solving for V2. Now, again, if you're a student that struggles a little bit with math, let me give you a tip here that's gonna make your life easier. Cross multiply to get everything on one line. And out of habit, I'm gonna cross multiply these first because I want this unknown on the left. It doesn't really matter. You could do this equals this, but I'm gonna start here. So I'm gonna say V2 times T1 equals V1 times T2. And um, you guys probably also know it doesn't matter if these two are switched. It doesn't matter if these two are switched. They're just multiplied. What's important is you have these two together and you have these two together. Now, I'm not quite done because I'm still trying to isolate that V2. I can see now that it's on one line. I can just divide both sides by T1. T1's cancel. So here's my formula. Um, just to go a little extra for you, I'm going to rewrite that. Volume two equals V1 times T2 over T1. This is the formula 
that I am going to be plugging into. Now, for some of you who are very mathematically inclined, that probably looks like a whole lot of extra work because some of you could have just plugged right into this, moved everything around and solved for V2. But I'll say this again, I really like getting everything rearranged with my unknown on the left, what I'm plugging into on the right, because now everything's set up. And when I pull my numbers down, I'm not going to have to rearrange numbers with units. The units will be set up perfectly. I can see what cancels, and I'll be assured that I hopefully have everything in its proper place. So I just think this is good technique, but I do understand it's not the only way to do it. All of that said, let's just plug in and get this answer. So V2 equals V1, which was 349 milliliters. times T2. Now be careful there because our T2 was 293 Kelvin. Divided by T1, which was 200 and, I'm sorry, 323 Kelvin. Now, I like it set up this way because I can very quickly see the Kelvins are going to cancel, and I'm left with the unit of milliliter. That's good news because they asked me to solve for volume, and milliliter is a unit of volume. So all I have to do now is multiply 349 by 293, hit equals, divide by 323, and you will get 316.58 milliliters. That is my final answer. And I'm kind of wondering, does that make sense? So let's look back up at the problem and see. So I started off with 349 milliliters at 50 degrees. Okay. So 349 milliliters at 50. The temperature went down. If the temperature goes down, it should make sense that the volume is also going to go down because when temperature increases, the gases start moving slower. They come closer together. So did my um, volume actually decrease along with the temperature? And it did. I started off with 349. I ended up with 316. That looks like a reasonable answer numerically. The things that should have canceled did. So that tells me I'm probably correct. Now let's do one more example of Charles Law. So this is a great place to maybe pause the video, copy down the question, see if you can do it, and then work along with me. If you're not quite there yet, that's all right. We'll do it together. A container of oxygen has a volume of 349 milliliters at a temperature of 22 degrees Celsius. What will the volume be at 50 degrees Celsius? So this time it looks like we're starting off at a lower temperature and we're moving up to a higher temperature. So I'm going to expect that volume to go up from 349. But let's see if I'm right. So let's go through and mark everything in the problem first. Um, I have oxygen at 349 milliliters at 22 Celsius. These go together. That adds kind of like a little clue for me there. So that's my volume one and my temperature one. Now, this does catch my attention because that's in Celsius, and I know I'm going to have to convert it to Kelvin before plugging in. I'll take care of that in a second. What will the volume be at 50 degrees Celsius? This has to be my T2 because that's all that's left. Looks like I'm solving for V2. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get these in the Kelvin. So T1, not Ti, T1 equals 22 degrees Celsius plus 273. So let's plug that in. 22 plus 273 equals 295 Kelvin. Notice I'm not putting a degree. It's just 295K. T2 equals 50 degrees Celsius plus 
273. And we already know that 50 plus 273 is 323 K because we just saw that in the last problem. So there's my T1 and my T2. Everything's labeled and ready to go. And by the way, I know that I'm using Charles's law because they never mentioned pressure in this problem. So I know it's, or I'm assuming, I can safely assume it's held constant, but they did give me volumes and temperatures. So let's write out Charles's law. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. I am solving for V2. To keep my life simple, I'm going to cross multiply V2, T1, this times this, equals V1 times T2. Okay? Again, I'm still trying to isolate V2, so I'm going to divide both sides by T1. T1's cancel, and I get V2 equals V1 times T2 over T1. This is what I am plugging into. I've already got everything labeled. All I've got to do is pull it down and put it in its proper spot with the unit so I can make sure the right things are canceling. So V1 was 349 milliliters. T2, make sure you pick up the T2, is 323 Kelvin. Over T1, which is 295 Kelvin. Kelvin's cancel. I can clearly see that because I put all of my units in my work. That leaves me with milliliters, which is a unit of volume. That's good news because that's what I was asked to solve for. So we're going to say 349 times 323 equals divided by 295. And that gives me 382.13 milliliters. All right. So let's take a look at that and see if it looks reasonable. I started off with 349 milliliters at 22 degrees Celsius. Okay, so I've got, you know, my 349 milliliters at 22. We heated it up, so it starts to heat up. And what, what happens when you heat up a gas to the volume? The pressure starts, I'm sorry, the volume starts increasing. So I should have a volume larger than 349 milliliters, and indeed I do. It went up to 382. So again, that looks reasonable. If I would have accidentally maybe um, gotten my temperatures mixed up, which can happen from time to time, that's a place you gotta be real careful, then I would have come out with a different volume and it probably would not have looked right. That looks reasonable, so I can be very confident in my answer. So that is Charles's Law. Charles's Law deals with Temperatures and volumes, again, tells us they are directly proportional. When temperature goes up, volume goes up. Temperature goes up, volume goes down. Um, pressure is held constant. You assume it's constant if you don't hear it mentioned, or maybe they give you a pressure and it never changes. The next video will deal with Gay-Lussac's law, and that law is going to compare pressure and temperature, and this time volume is going to be held constant. And when I show you this law, you're going to start seeing a lot of similarities between how we write the different basic gas laws.